Why did you start to think about doing such an ambitious journey, Peter? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I realize uh, everyone would want some sort of adventure in life. And uh, adventure is interesting because it keeps life more interesting. Uh, uh, and I know that uh, I would not live forever. So before I kick the bucket, I would like to travel the world and see the world personally on my own, you know. And uh, the best way I felt was, well, not too fast, not too slow. Bicycle is fantastic. By cycling around the world. Was there a reason why you chose the bicycle as opposed to, say, um, um, BMW GS or, <laughs> you know, Toyota Hilux or even by, you know, public transport, bus, ferry, coach, plane, that kind of thing? Okay. <clears throat> Good question. Well, I suppose uh, I enjoy cycling a lot and moreover, it's much more cheaper. Uh, I believe cycling with your own energy, right, uh, not only it is uh, a bit of challenge to myself, but also it's a healthy alternative. Uh. And uh, bicycle, uh, when you're on your bicycle, uh, it is very friendly. I mean, um, it doesn't feel threatening. You know, people will approach you, they will ask you, they will talk to you. So it's a good way, you know, uh, cycling. Besides my passion on bicycle, I also think it's the best way to see the world on the bicycle. Did you expect it to be solo? Did you plan it to be solo? Or was it just be happened to be solo? Okay, I plan to be solo. Two reasons. Number one, I knew uh, I want to go on my own pace. Uh, I don't really like people to wait for me. Neither do I like to, you know, uh, wait for people. And I have a freedom to stop when I like and, uh, you know, change my plan uh, as I like. So it is a total freedom. So I prefer to cycle alone. And then in terms of your dependents, you know, your children, your uh, wife, okay. um, how did you convince them that you could do this? Well, it's... Uh, they thought when I did the trial run in 2015 is uh, I'm actually experiencing midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> they thought after, uh, you know, uh, my first trial was uh, cycling to Thailand, then back to Singapore and back to find out whether I am ready and up to it uh, for such a long two years journey. So uh, it was delayed for a week and my children and my wife was thinking, ah, this is just a midlife crisis and uh, it will never happen. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I ran uh, for the trial. I did the trial, came back after two months and I absolutely loved it. Okay. And they knew I was serious about it. Tell me about the trial. Okay. The trial, basically, <clears throat> I did it in 2015. The reason I did the trial was uh, for all that I have learned from the people that I host who travel around the world, uh, and I wanted to find out whether I'm capable of doing it. If I'm capable of doing it, do I love to do it? Uh, and whatever I learn, I practice and so on. So that two months itself uh, is a steep learning curve, and I the experience that I have actually prepared me for my world tour in 2017. It is indeed very useful. So your trial was to Thailand, Bangkok, and also to Singapore, from Kuala Lumpur. Okay, the trial run is basically from here uh, to Langkawi, whereby I cross over to Thailand uh, via sea, Kok Lipe, then travel back by boat to the mainland, Pak Bara, then cycle to Bangkok. From Bangkok, I took a train down to Padang Besar. I mean, I, I don't want to cycle on the same route. Took a train down to Padang Besar and cycle across East Coast, down to Singapore, then back the other way. So there's a saying, you know, if you want to tour the world, you haven't even cycled your whole country. That's not make sense. Lah. So uh, that was my route and I absolutely loved it. So you planned this trip in four parts. It was a global tra uh, um, um, journey, right? Malaysia to Europe, leg one. Right. Okay, stage one is Asia. That means from Malaysia to in uh, to to India, Amaritsa. Okay, from uh, stage two from uh, Pakistan to England. All right, stage three basically across America, where I will fly over uh, from Manchester to to Boston. 
uh, my sister is there and my son is there. So I will cycle across America to Washington State. From Washington State, I will take a flight to, to uh, Japan, Tokyo, and make my way down to uh, Fukuoka, take a ferry to Busan, right, and cycle Korea, then go take a ferry uh, uh, to China, uh, then to Beijing, then in a certain part, I will take a train. Then from there, Laos, Vietnam, maybe Cambodia, Thailand, then back. So that is the fourth stage. What about the courage to do this? Because if you have never basically traveled these vast distances before, how did you muster up the courage to basically leave the country, leave the comforts of your home? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Um, I strongly believe, look, I mean, I'll be telling you a lie if I tell you I am not afraid, okay? Uh, yes, initially, you know, you are wary when you can, you are worried of uncertainty and so on. But as, you, as I travel along, I get used to it, familiar with the daily routine and so on. Courage can be built, okay? But you must have the passion for explore. You must have the uh, 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 enthusiasm to find out, to experience new things. You must have the interest uh, to meet up new people. So all these kind of overlook the uh, so-called fear that you have. So from there, your interests actually cover up and build your courage along the way. So experience also counts. Like, see, the two months that I traveled, right, I have that experience. So it builds up my courage. Right? So don't worry if you are scared. It is normal. But make sure you must do take the first step. So that first morning, right, when you left the house, your neighbor was there, your wife was there, and yes. they waved goodbye. Yes. There was only a two-person family. Oh, my, 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 my children was there. And your too. kids were my, there. Uh, so. my, my two children was there. My eldest son was in the States. Okay. Right. So so how did you feel when you were leaving the house that, that, that morning? Oh, I was extremely excited. <laughs> <laughs> Because finally, you know, I get to go to live my dream. I mean, how often do people get to do that? A two years holiday, okay? And it's not only me, because my wife by then was retired, okay? And uh, my two children are working, and my younger one is uh, studying in the States. So along the way, they will join me. You see, part of the plan is that my wife, well, she doesn't like cycling, she will, because I already planned the route, so she will know where I would be there. So she will fly in. Before she fly in, I was there, right, to pick her up in the airport. Then we go for a tourist holiday. She flies back and continue. Whereas my children will pick a country they want, fly in with the prompter, cycle with me, uh, depends on their, how long they can uh, take their leave or holiday, then they fly back. So this is pre-planned. So um, I, I will miss my children, yes. You know, now with the technology, you got Skype, you got uh, WhatsApp, you can literally talk to them facing that. So technology helps. And basically, honestly, you know, I was excited. <laughs> I was excited to leave. But you took five long years to basically learn from fellow riders. Um, you started hosting in 2010, Correct. right? Riders from all over the world, right? Yes. Um, 2015, you did your trial to Singapore and... No, to Thailand, then Singapore, then back. Thailand, Singapore, back, okay? Yeah. But you only left on your world trip in 2017. Correct. Right? It took you seven years to plan. Um, why, why so long? Okay. To start with, uh, my parents, I was still taking care of my parents and my children are still in school, okay? And I can only retire when I'm 55 where I have the money to pay off my mortgage, uh, and my commitment will be less, okay? So by 2000, when I was uh, 55, um, basically, you know, my, my parents have uh, passed away. My two children are working. I have only a younger one studying. So, of course, uh, I need to also plan a passive income, how to go about it. Uh, when I'm not around, you know, there are still bills to pay. My children are still in school. What are the emergency funds and so on as a backup? What are the passive income? So those are the plans along the way, okay, uh, for the five years. I have to be sure that I can go two years, okay, continuously 
without any hindrance in financially and my children and my wife are well taken care. The house are fully paid in case anything happened to me, they always have a home. They will know what to do. I have prepared a will, you know, so that in case of anything happen, all is ready. Insurance? Uh, okay, insurance, interesting part. Uh, I couldn't get the insurance because it's a two year, even a one year insurance is difficult. Okay, you can get a one year insurance, but you have to fly back six months, then continue, fly back there to continue. So I didn't buy insurance. So at the end of the day, I give up. I just buy, I just did a will. Okay, so that was my, 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 my uh, uh, solution out of it. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, keep myself alive, <laughs> come back, I still see my family at home and everything. Okay. Um, in terms of your personal side, right, when you went on the trip, right, um, did you have a lot of people supporting you? Uh, did you, did the people say, oh, you're crazy, don't do this, you're too old? <laughs> and how did you um, put those thoughts aside? Okay, now I have done research and I have hosted people who have, uh, even older than me, uh, Ann Wilson, my first uh, uh, guest, uh, she was coming to her 60s and later on I hosted another couple in their 60s, all right, oldest, who cycle from England <laughs> to, to here. So to start with, <clears throat> The age is a number, I have to agree with many of them who have traveled, right? Uh, I meet those people which have proved that they can do it. Uh, you just don't get killed. Take your ride, enjoy your ride, cycle at your own pace. Now, I have also friends who have never been to uh, trips like that or, you know, are wary of, oh, you know, you are old and so on and so forth, don't do it and so on. Well, we will take, a, take it as uh, advice as a pinch of salt because uh, everyone is different. Everyone has their own opinion. There is no right and wrong. Uh, this is their dream. This is my dream. Okay? I have friends who have never experienced all this before and look at me, wow, you, know, you are living your dream. So it is up to me, <coughs> who do I want to listen? It is up to me which dream that I want to go. So I choose that, you know, to see the world on the bicycle and that was my dream. And I'm going to do it. Those people that you hosted yes. for a number of years, you mentioned there was a guy called Rob Lilwall. Yes. You oh, no, I didn't host Rob Lilwall. I got to know him from a newspaper, read his book and saw his video. I didn't host him. Right? He was my first mentor. Right? So I didn't host him. But I hosted... Uh, many others, and one of the guests that I hosted knew Rob Lewo. He came over to give a talk, a motivation talk, and uh, Bill Hudson, he's a quite an interesting character. He wear a Superman suit and cycle around the world. Uh, managed to link up uh, with, with Rob Lewo, which is his friend, in 2019. Okay. Yeah. The, the people that you met, right? and hosted, yes. what did they say to you to inspire you the most? Ah, number one is, uh, age is just a number. If you have a dream, live your dream, right? There are many ways of doing it. If you cannot do it at one go, cut it in small little pieces. Right? Doing section by section. At the end of the day, you still live your dream. Don't let your dream fade. So that was the advice to me. Okay, so in terms of planning the route, right, Peter? How long did you spend on that? Um, it is uh, quite a while actually. Uh, I think my uh, in two thousand ten I start planning. <clears throat> okay, uh, while hosting a lot of uh, uh, cyclists to cycle around the world, uh, I look through their journal and uh, look through some of the uh, part. Uh, part of the country that they cycle. So I have identified and only after uh, four years, uh, 2014, <clears throat> I know the plan kind of uh, comes out, okay? Um, but very weakly. So it's only end of 2017, no, beginning of 2017, uh, 
that's where I seriously you know chart the route like what you've seen on the chart so I prepared that uh, I would say about seven years to actually know where I want to go which month I want to be and what are the things that I want to see along the journey Okay, so country to country selection is kind of like the first level, right? Yes. Then within the country, town by town, city by city, and then uh, journey by journey. For example, what I mean by journey is that between towns, you, you because you're on bicycle, yes. um, it depends on weather, it depends on terrain, depends on elevation, depends on fitness, depends on how you feel as well. So how did you plan city to city, knowing that if you don't make that town or make that city, there could be issues in terms of darkness or, for example, or places where you can camp. Ah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, good question. Uh, now, I know uh, two years is too short to see everything. So my plan is basically uh, for stage one, like here to, to, to Amaritsa. So um, I have five months to reach Amaritsa. And I know in each country, there are certain highlights that I would like to visit or cycle. So I will mark that, okay? And if I cannot reach that certain uh, hot, uh, interesting place that I need to visit, I will skip certain part. Uh, either I travel by train, either I travel by bus, or I hitchhike. So uh, Thailand, no problem. I managed to cycle most of it. Uh, then Myanmar, okay. Uh, there are certain part uh, is difficult. I take a train, okay, uh, to Yangon. Then uh, from Yangon out, you know, traffic is heavy. I just took a train for two hundred kilometers out before I make my way to Mandalay, right? Uh, my plan from Mandalay to actually cross over to India uh, uh, using the border, but I was not allowed to. So I take a flight to Calcutta. Right? Now from there, <clears throat> now India, um, I wanted to cycle India, but the traffic is terrible. And uh, I didn't have much time. I don't enjoy India. So I skip India, take a train to Siriguri. Then from there, I enter Nepal. Nepal, I cycle particularly most of the way. Went to Annapurna and so on and so forth. Right? So uh, certain part of India, I just skip. Right? But uh, from, from Amaritsa, okay, from that day onwards, I will cycle uh, to Pakistan. Now, Pakistan, the northern part is beautiful. I'm not going to waste my time uh, on the uh, lower part. So I take bus uh, to travel certain sections. So I have 29 or 30 days best time at certain places to enjoy them fully. So this is the way I travel because I know... I'm not a strong cyclist, so uh, but the objective is basically you know not how far you can cycle, uh, how strong you are. The objective is to see the world, no matter whichever way you can. That's my dream. Okay, then in terms of um, daily mileage covered. Okay. How how far were you covering a day? Okay. Uh, I think uh, the fur fastest, the furthest that I have cycled is basically about 150 kilometers a day. Now this is in Ubakistan, whereby it is desert. There is a very little thing. It's boring. I it's hot, so I just try to make the distance. That's about it. Uh, in certain part, it is so freaking big, difficult. Eight kilometers a day, whereby I have to push. But the best. Uh, distance for me average is about 70 to 80 kilometers a day whereby I can cycle stop rest take photograph uh, interact with the locals and so on so it depends on which country beautiful country I will take my time okay so boring country I will try to skip and uh, move down as fast as I can so typical day on the road you would wake up what time would you start riding okay um, I like to cycle when it is cool, cold, okay? So in, in Asia, I usually cycle around 6 in the morning. Okay? Set off by 6. Uh, set up, ready by 6, I will cycle. Now, if uh, on a country whereby it is freaking hot, like in uh, Uzbekistan, I cycle as early as 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay, Uzbekistan, how hot was it during the day? Okay, uh, 39, 40? <laughs> 
dry <laughs> heat, right? Oh, it's freaking hot. <laughs> it's freaking warm. So if you start early, their 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 uh, light comes out very early. By five o'clock, it's all bright already. <laughs> so I, I will try to cycle early. So by the time it is afternoon, right? I made maybe about ninety kilometers already because I'm slow. Is it? So lunchtime, I can eat, I can rest. Then the balance, maybe another 40 to 50 kilometers, you know, I can take it slow. <laughs> oh, it's hot. Most of the time in Asia, were you stealth camping or were you... Um, uh, okay. Uh, in Asia, uh, especially in Thailand, I, I mostly stay uh, in cheap hotel or, or guest house. Uh, it's cheap. Okay. In Myanmar, uh, so far, I have to stay in foreign hotel. I only came once and I was caught by the police. And the police took me to the police station. He said, no camp, dangerous. At night, 12 o'clock, it came here. It was so cold, you know. It came here, no camp, no camp, passport, passport. So he saw my passport and said, and then he called his superior. Because the next town is 60 kilometers, you know. It's midnight, 12 o'clock. So he said, no camp, no camp. Uh, follow me, follow me. So carry my bag and put me in the police station. Okay, the police station is like an up house, you know. No, no, no shell, nothing. I said, wow, this is better than camping. So, honestly... Uh, in Myanmar, I have to uh, basically stay in foreign hotel. But in Europe, because it's expensive, in Balkan it's expensive, everything is in Euro, so I camp a lot. Step camp. Uh, I will cycle until 5, right before the sunset. I will look for a place first. And I usually, before I camp, I will pass a town, I will collect a bottle of water. Because I have drinking water, but that big bottle of water is for me to shower, wet myself, and cook. Right, so I usually cycle one kilometer out of town and look for a place to stop camp. Once it's done, I'll set up my tent, you know, cook my dinner. Then the, I will leave early in the morning. Tips for stealth camping? What are the things that you look out for? Uh, say, say that again. Tips for stealth camping. Oh, tips, ah. Huh? Okay, to start with, uh, make sure you camp out of the town, less crowded places where you can hide. Okay. Uh, maybe along the road there are some trees and so on you can pitch your tent at the back and also it's important that you have a water source a river a creek or at least you have a bottle of water uh, avoid littering you know uh, you leave nothing but footprints you know whatever trash you have you have to collect it back uh, uh, what you call that uh, set it up when it's about to get dark right and uh, leave when it is before black up. So those are tips that uh, uh, for step camping. What about danger? Okay, danger. <clears throat> Even cycling is dangerous. Driving is also dangerous. So danger is everywhere. Uh, the important thing is basically you have to do a bit of research. What are the danger you'll be facing in which country? Whether uh, uh, And also what are the danger you may face camping? So you take all the precaution. Now, uh, I can tell you, people don't go out of the way to remote places to rob you. And the places that I usually camp are remote places, okay? You usually get robbed in touristy area uh, where they have money. And uh, on the bicycle, uh, people look at people who cycles, uh, you know, these guys on bicycle, no money. <laughs> If you are driving a big BMW motorbike or a camper van, uh, those are the target. So, uh, so far, okay, thank God I have not been robbed. Uh, I have not encountered serious danger. Like, I wouldn't say no. Like, there's only one part that I felt was dangerous whereby, you know, it's nearly been hit by a truck. Okay. Other than that, uh, I am safe and came back in one piece. So until your trip was cut short in France, um, you had already been through 10 to 15 countries. 22 right? countries. 22 countries. Yeah. Which were the highlights? My highlight, Pakistan. Uh, I think since 9-11, no tourists go there. Sad. But Pakistan is among my favorite countries. I, I have a video I will show you. It's jaw-dropping beautiful. Now, the northern part, whereby in Gilgit, okay, uh, up to the border to China, uh, it is extremely beautiful. Okay, the people are very friendly. I, I was cycling and it says, uh, uh, showing a picture, camp, camp, camp. Oh, yeah, 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 camp. Camp at his orchard. 
later they will give you food <laughs> before you leave they will give you a bunch of dry nuts and so on for you to take away they are extremely hospitable really nice people yeah you got the the Hunza Mountains, you got the Husseini yes, Bridge. Yes, the Hunza Valley, yeah. you know. Um, oh, it is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. What other country stood out for you? Uh, another country that stood out to me is basically uh, Tajikistan, actually. But it's, uh, they, they call it <clears throat> people who like uh, challenges, you know, is it's a, a bad-ass country that you have to go <laughs> You know, it is difficult, but of course the scenery uh, to me is that uh, Tajikistan is, is a very tough country to cycle, uh, uh, very remote, the, the, te- the, the weather changes within hours, you know, you have hot sun, then next minute you have smoke <laughs> dropping, you know, uh, villages are uh, uh, very small and remote, uh, no, 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 f- uh, you can't find any restaurant, you know, basically the guest house will also feed you. Uh, but it's very challenging. Uh, so that part is, uh, to me, is really tough. And uh, it, along the Wakan Valley. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, is sometimes the most enjoyable trip may not be the most, remem- you can remember the most, the most tough trip where you suffer like hell, uh, you can remember it for the rest of your life. So that part is interesting, it's challenging, uh, it's interesting. So so I would say Pakistan uh, and Tajikistan, uh, one is beautiful, enjoy actually, another one is, uh, well, it's beautiful, but it's a pain in the ass. Were the border crossings difficult in general? Okay, uh, the border crossing so far, I do not have any problem except China. Because from uh, Tashkugan, uh, 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 Kujarat Pass, they call it, uh, to China. <clears throat> I will cross from Pakistan to, to, to China. Now, I had to apply China visa twice. The first one when I was in uh, 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 Nepal, Kathmandu. <clears throat> uh, they only gave me a five days validity because I was going to hide Annapurna, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Another one you are asking me how the nicest way. I think uh, Annapurna is also my favorite. ABC, yeah. Okay, ABC is also my favorite. Now come back to the visa. Now uh, they only gave me five days validity in China to cross from Nepal to China. Okay, I thought they gave me a three months validity, so uh, my money was burned there. So I traveled back to India after Nepal. And I took a train bus down to Calcutta, to, not Calcutta, uh, New Delhi to reapply again, right? And th- this time I used the express service and I got my visa, okay? Uh, which in the end, I spent about 700 Malaysian ringgit just to get a 30 days China visa. So that wow. one is tough. Now, crossing to China is also very strict. When I crossed from uh, uh, Pakistan to China, they will scan everything, you know, they will press on your food to make sure you don't have knife and so on. Uh, my cooking fuel, they will pull it away and so on. I can't even buy gasoline when I was uh, uh, there because it is illegal for people who drive who need a, 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 a ID in order to go in to buy uh, 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 petrol. I can't camp, so I have to sneak and camp under the bridge. I cannot stay in foreigner hotel. I cannot even go into any of the villages. So that part is quite tough, but I only spent 10 days in China, uh, uh, Kashgar, before I took a taxi to uh, uh, Ubakistan. So when you're riding, right, Peter, what do you think about? Oh, when I'm riding, what I'm thinking about, number one, where I got nice food to eat. <laughs> <laughs> when you're cycling, uh, you woke up appetite, right? So, what are the nice food to eat and where can I find? Number two, scenery. I will stop, you know, have a drink and just admire the scenery. Some part of the world, you see nothing, just you and the whole, you know, landscape in front. And it's like, you know, you, you you own the whole place. And sometimes when I camp, I just have simple breakfast. In one place, I, I text to my sons, oh, I just have my simple breakfast. 
but I have a million dollar view in front of me. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, so these are the little, little pleasure that I get. Okay. Uh, honestly, I tell you, I don't miss home because the wonders of the world is just in front of me. And at one stage when I was in Pakistan, <clears throat> I camped. So at night, I wanted to go up uh, uh, to the toilet to do a leak. Then I, I realized my tent was sagging down, my slide sheet. When unzip, actually the snow was falling down. Jesus Christ. You know, I, 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 I told my friend, I said, you know, uh, one day I would like to see God masterpiece. So the next morning when I opened up, the whole place was like Christmas. It is so beautiful. <laughs> so I can tell you, it is beautiful. I, I, I really enjoy those things. Let's start with the bicycle. Okay. Um, what what did you? What was your choice of a weapon? Ah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I have a Shirley. Okay, it's a especially for touring Shirley. Uh, um, for panniers or the bags, I have Autolip. Okay. Uh, now all these equipments, I actually met cyclists uh, who I hosted, and they show me the gear, so I know what are the good stuff. Um, and uh, I have the bar bags, and basically my 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 handlebar is a uh, uh, butterfly bar. Uh, the seat is basically a broke saddle. It's a leather saddle. Very comfortable. Oh, uh, you have to kind of season it a bit. Uh, for one thousand five hundred kilometers before <coughs> it is softer and nicer to fit into your butt. <laughs> So initially it was difficult, but the try run I did and so on, uh, so it softened up. So okay, uh, for my uh, uh, tent, I basically have uh, haba haba two men's tent, uh, pop up? all season. Pop up. Sorry. So you throw it pops up. No 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 no. It, assemble. Basically you have to assemble and so on. It's a very very good tent. Right, uh, haba haba uh, two men tent. Uh, of course, uh, for clothing, I have uh, my, uh, uh, what you call it, merino layers clothing, uh, layers. Uh, for sleeping bag, I have a minus 20 sleeping bag. Uh, air bed, the more rest, uh, which is quite warm. Uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, my stove, I have good stove. Uh, then, to, uh, what else? Uh, of course, uh, I will have my camera, which is important to me. Um, <clears throat> I have a Fuji camera. I have um, well, which which I, Fuji was it? Uh, AX one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, quite small and uh, point compact. and shoot or DSLR. Uh, DSLR. Uh, you can also record video. Okay. Uh, I have like uh, uh, like GoPro, but it's basically an imitation a Taiwan brand. I think it's uh, AEC or something. Like that. I don't know the brand. I forgot the brand. Uh, of course, I have <coughs> my handphone. I have two handphones. One is uh, backup in case, you know. And another one uh, I have, uh, which I use it with dual SIM card. Uh, one is roaming, so I can contact my family. Uh, shoe. I have uh, for cycling in hot weather, Keens. Then I have uh, for hiking and cold weather, Solomon. Okay, and also a crop right, for rainy, wet country. Okay. Okay. <coughs> um, what about um, warm weather and dry weather? Okay. <clears throat> uh, now, uh, a lot of people sometimes uh, you know, don't spend money on clothing. So it is very important that my advice is, you know, invest in uh, dry fit, okay? Because it dry fast and it doesn't really smell that much. Uh, and you can wash it, you know, and so on. And it dries within a day. So, uh, you know, you can go to the catalog. Uh, you get those dry fit, right? Which one I'm wearing now is comfortable, thin, and dry very fast, okay? Now, in colder country, basically, I have... Uh, Merino layer is thin, so I will wear the layer and maybe wear my uh, uh, rain jacket, right? Uh, it keeps me warm. So when I'm cycling, sometimes uh, it is actually sweating, right? Uh, so uh, I have different, different um, 
uh, uh, tires for different uh, uh, climate. Okay, uh, I can just put on the layers or take out the layers. So it depends on how the weather, weather conditions. Okay. Okay. Um, what about um so you you had a laptop with you. Were you editing yeah. on the way? What what software were you using? Okay. Uh, basically, uh, for Word, Microsoft. Okay. For sometimes I do a little bit of uh, editing. Uh, I use Adobe Premiere. I have Photoshop, and sometimes uh, I have to do some lettering designs and so on uh, for my posters. You know, uh, on uh, to post up on Facebook. I use uh, Illustrator. Okay, so those are the few uh, main softwares that I have. And then were you updating social media on the way or were you blogging or what? How, okay. how are you doing it? I have a Facebook account uh, with Love I Write. So uh, for quick updates and so on, I use Facebook. I have a journal in Crazy Guy on my bike. Okay, whereby every, journal, uh, every, day, uh, every day there will be a write-up. Uh, with maps and details of uh, what happened so that people who want to travel the world and want to learn they can actually go into this uh, crazy guy on bike if you type Peter Young New Basis find my journal uh, I also have Instagram whereby uh, sometimes I just upload the pictures and just a few words so uh, people can you know follow my tour because uh, I'm actually raising funds for World Vision so people who likes uh, what I post uh, they donate directly to Simply Giving, which is a secure site. Uh, and the funds actually go directly to underprivileged children for the donation. None of the funds will be used for me because I'm cycling under my own cost. All the, all the uh, funds collected will be channeled to uh, charity. Okay, back to the bike. The bike was a, the Shirley, right? It's yes. a steel frame bike. Yes. Um, the tyres, what were your Okay. Choice. I use a Swabe Marathon 2.1 inch tire. Um, <clears throat> the size of the tire is 26 inch, right? Which you can get it easily. If I don't get any uh, 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 26 inch tires, I can get mountain bike tires. Okay. So those are the things that I use. A lot of punctures on the way? So far, no. But uh, in Thailand, I did have a number of puncture because my, my, my tire was a bit thin. Uh, I, I used, I, I bought a second-hand tire. But uh, I did manage to get a new tire, which I replaced it and used the, <clears throat> the old tire as a backup. Uh, I didn't get any puncture. I reached Balkans. Okay, so far, it is good. I would say it's about seven punctures. Okay, okay. Then in terms of um, the actual um, chronology of the trip itself, how did you how do you uh, record your thoughts, your notes? How frequent uh, were they? How detailed did you go? Things like that. Okay, uh, I have a small booklet whereby I will record uh, the important details from where to where, what date. Okay, what time uh, I started and what, how much I spend a day and where. And certain people that I meet, especially cyclists or the place that I stay, right, their contact and so on. So that little book itself is like a, 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 a backbone, a frame. For me, when I reach, uh, a, well, usually four days, I will find a place to stay, whereby I will do... Uh, 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 some housework, I can do my cleaning, catalog my photograph, then write my journal. So with the small notebook, <clears throat> uh, after four days, I will pay with the photograph, then I will write and record the journal. On top of it, if I have Wi-Fi, I will upload it in Facebook or Instagram. Okay. And, th and then in terms of um, currency, how are, you, how are you carrying currency around and how how much was in cash? How much was in uh, credit card, debit card, that kind of thing? Okay, uh, I don't carry a lot of cash because uh, you know, for precaution purposes. But I do carry uh, about 150 US dollar in small note hidden somewhere. Okay, uh, I have two wallets. One wallet whereby is my actual wallet with a credit card and a, a bank ATM card, which I hide it somewhere in my pannier. 
the front bar bags, I have another daily, weekly wallet, they call it, which we have about a week wallet whereby I can pay for my food or buy certain things along the way. And I also have an outdated credit card whereby you cannot withdraw anything. So it's like a caution thing. Okay. Um, with the ATM card, <clears throat> usually I will reach big town. I will withdraw using my ATM card. Now, mine is a CIMB ATM card whereby I ask my bank to open up because when I travel. Now, of course, uh, the, the, if you reach certain country, they will convert for you. If you, you know, uh, just withdraw in Thailand, they will give you. But of course, you know, there are some service charges or interest. No doubt, I felt uh, it is high, maybe in certain countries, but I felt safer. I don't need to carry a lot of cash with me. Okay, <clears throat> in terms of security, um, for example, as a solo traveler, right? Yeah. When you come into a cafe, when you want to use the toilet, you got your stuff in front of you. How did you um, manage that? Uh, okay. Practical uh, problem. Now, uh, I find it uh, uh, a bit difficult when I'm in big towns because there are more people moving around and so on. So I usually will cycle to a gas station, okay? Uh, at the set, usually they will have a lot of things. I park my bicycle outside, especially very close to the toilet door, and run in, do, but I carry my important front uh, bar bag, where my passport, my camera, my wallet, okay? and uh, run into the toilet, do it, and come out. But I do lock my bicycle. Okay, okay so you still got loose stuff in? So far, I have not lose any stuff lah, because I was pretty cautious. Lah. Uh, I usually find it safer eh? actually in the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, I, I like to share a certain story with you. You know, uh, <clears throat> during my travel, uh, you know, I find it, uh, this international uh, way of uh, doing a business, okay? <laughs> After doing a business, washing is the best way. Yeah. <laughs> because why? You don't have to look for paper, okay? You have, a, you always be, cyclists always have a container of water. Make sure you have to, another one specifically for that. La. All right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, 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 it's safer because you can do it right hiding in a bush beside your bicycle, okay? Uh, I always find that safer outside, less crowded places, okay? Um, and also, uh, sometimes I go to a shop to eat because I know I want to use their toilet to eat and talk to the owner. Chit chat, chit chat. I says, oh, you know, keep an eye on me because I'm still eating their food. Here. I go to the toilet. So they help to keep an eye on that. So in a way, you feel safe, okay? That you know the old the, the, the buyer who's selling food to you will help you to keep an eye. Okay, so th these are little uh, caution things that I use like. Okay, and then um, how about like shots, like video video shots when when you want to be getting some footage of yourself, uh, okay, or pictures of yourself. Okay, now uh, I have a tripod. Okay, uh, whereby I actually. Uh, 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 with a timer, take photograph of me. But sometimes I can run a few rounds, sometimes even 10 times just to get the perfect shot. And sometimes I got to trust the local. <laughs> okay. Uh, sometimes the local, you know, uh, I just pass a photograph. I says, I'm here, help me take a photograph or take a video. Okay. They will do that for you. And sometimes I met other cyclists, okay, who is happy to, you know, exchange. The video he took for me, I took for him. So we exchanged the video. Right? In this case, I think just now you saw the video. I, oh, that was fantastic. Okay, So this is how I take photographs uh, of myself and so on. What about the bike, but the riding community? Did you have much interaction with them? Oh, Other yeah. people you know, crossing the world? Yes. Uh, you see, there is this uh, WhatsApp group, Cycling Around the World, Question oh. and Answer. Yes. Uh, it is always full. Uh, you need to be on the road uh, and uh, you have to be invited in uh, so that uh, any question you want, you can actually type it in and people who are still traveling around will answer you. All right. So 
uh, cycling round the world question and answer. Okay, it's a WhatsApp group, but it's always full one. Some people finish their tour, come out immediately, some people will go in already. <coughs> I also have, uh, it's important when you travel around the world. You know, nobody is the jack of all trades who have all the information. So you tie yourself with people who have done tours like that. Act as a consultant. Okay, I have a few who have cycled certain route. So before I go in, I will time that, okay, you know, I'm going to hear from here to here. Uh, so what are your thoughts about it? Uh, so they will give you feedback. Oh, you know, here, here, you, you stay in this hostel. This is very good. This guy is good and so on. Oh, you must try this food and so on. Oh, you must visit here. So this consultant sometimes even don't know will help you do a research. This is on the WhatsApp group, is it? Yes, WhatsApp group. Some of them are my friends, which I hosted, and some of them who have done certain trip. You know, uh, when I was in uh, Bagan, right, I met this guy uh, from, from uh, England. So he says, oh, there is a cruise who goes up to Mandela. I didn't know about that. So I told my friend. Uh, my friend did all the research because she also cycling. Is it? She also very interested. She did the research. Oh, yeah, yeah. How much, how much, where he live, everything. Uh. So he passed all his information to me. Wow, fantastic. So that's one consultant that is useful. Another one. You see, when I was in China, I trying to apply for Tajikistan uh, a visa. I, now, because China is very strict, no WhatsApp, a lot of Google, YouTube, all cannot, they must have WeChat on it. And at uh, that time, I don't have roaming service there. I managed to apply online, but I couldn't pay because when you want to make payment on uh, visa, they'll send you a PIN number yeah, and so on. You have to type in the PIN number. So I couldn't get that, so I couldn't pay. So with WeChat, I have a friend in Singapore. He apply for me, pay for me, uh, and send it to my email. <laughs> so I got it. So people like that, you should keep in touch to have consultant, right? And people who have friends who does have done this trip and so on, uh, they can advise you. So it's good source of information. Advice. 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 Okay. Okay, let's do this in categories. Advice to people your age. I advise people my age. Okay, how old I am? Well, I started the journey at 57. So, uh, of course, uh, age is just a number. I have met cyclists who have cycled around the world at the age of 60. Uh, and even 65, they are still continue to cycle around the world. So, age is just a number to start with. <clears throat> so, if you have the dream, don't let it fade, you know. Uh, and of course, you know, if you are still working, have a family, and you think that, uh, oh, you know, it is impossible, this and that, of course, during that time, it might look impossible. But as you move forward in life, you never know the opportunity will just pop up, and there you are. You can travel. Okay, that's one. Two, <clears throat> uh, is it dangerous? Okay. Um, well, driving is even dangerous. Nothing is 100% uh, 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 safe. So even you go for a cruise, you know, it's always danger. But don't let things like that hinders you from traveling and seeing the world. Because there's so much to see and so much to learn. Okay? that uh, you should not, you know, miss uh, before you, so to speak, kick the bucket. Now, there are lots of things that I have not seen before, uh, lots of food that I have not tried, uh, places that I have not seen. Um, <clears throat> of course, uh, when he says, this is the first time for you to travel, isn't it uh, scary? Well, I tell you the truth to start with. Uh, I will be telling you a lie if I'm not scared. Yes, I'm scared. But I suppose the curiosity, the sense of adventure, the excitement of trying new things overcome it. And also, as I travel along, <coughs> uh, I become more confident, right? Because the first step is for you to step out of your boundary out of your comfort zone. So by stepping out of your comfort zone, you slowly build confidence. 
because you have nobody to rely on, you rely on yourself and you become more self-sufficient and more confident. Okay? Okay. What should people know about other human beings? What should people know about other human beings? Okay. You know, the world is not cruel after all. Okay? There are still lots of nice people who actually put their hand forward to help you in the poorest country that I have traveled. Which country was that? Well, I would like to say, you know, uh, most of the country, but Tajikistan, uh, no, Pakistan to start with. Uh, of course, you know, along the way in Thailand, Myanmar, but the, out the, uh, the, the country that really stands out, Pakistan and Azerbaijan. They are really hospitable. They really go a mile to offer help to feed you. <laughs> oh, oh, that's fantastic. Right, I have fantastic story in Azerbaijan whereby for every kilometer I stopped, I was fed, I was given food, <laughs> I was given drinks. What should people know about riding a bicycle around the world? Okay. Uh, Riding a bicycle around the world. To start with, I suppose you must have a passion uh, to enjoy cycling. Okay, Even you have physically strong and uh, you don't enjoy the passion to travel on the bicycle, uh, it doesn't serve that purpose. So to start with, you must have passion uh, using your bicycle as a mode of transport to see the world. Because uh, to me, it's that I have the freedom. Not too fast, not too slow. And also, bicycles are very uh, 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 less threatening, so to speak, where you can, uh, locals will approach you, curiosity, you know, chat, and so on. Uh, bicycles are easy to maintain as compared to motorbikes and so on. And crossing border with the bicycle is far much more easier than having a motorbike or a car. Right? So I can share with you is that if you love cycling, tour on your bicycle. You don't have to start big. Tour around Malaysia, around town and so on. Gradually, you increase your distance. What should people know about solo travel? Solo travel. Okay, they are pro and con side. I wouldn't say uh, it is 100% fantastic. But I can share with you that solo cycling uh, give you the ultimate freedom to a solo cyclist. Where to stop? your plan, if you want to change, you know, um, then to, uh, meeting people uh, and also being hosted. You know, it's easy to host one person and two person, right? So, uh, of course, uh, the con sign I just shared with you is basically, you know, you are self-reliant. Anything problem with your bicycle, that's it. You're going to do it yourself, okay? If you are in trouble, you have to face it. Now, also comes to food, okay? Now, if you have a group, you can order more dishes and you can try, you know, one go, a few dishes. But if you're one person, you can only try a certain dishes at a time, okay? Now, of course, cost. Now, if you travel with a group, you can share the cost of accommodation in staying, okay? And of course, when you cook, you know, you can, you know, share your food, different, different flavor. Camping also, you don't feel so scared you have a friend. But of course, you know, being solo, I have camped some of the most spectacular remote places in the world where I enjoy the solitude of being alone, right? Overlooking mountains of snow with stars of birth. So uh, it is so peaceful. It is so nice, right? And it is so, uh, what you call it, rewarding to me. So, pro, I mean, uh, in groups or single, if you ask me to choose, I will choose solo to me. That is my preference. You haven't completed your round the world journey, right? Yes. Um, would you still, what would you change? How would you alter your next stage when you start again? Okay, it depends on the uh, circumstances of 
the future circumstances because I, I, I my wife is not well. So I am not really sure. But I wish, okay, that uh, when I travel again, <clears throat> I instead of uh, the additional, supposed to be two years, I only did uh, 11 months, 15 days. And if I have a choice, I would want to travel forever, okay? Because two years is just not enough. And if I want to travel, I would want to go up and down Europe or maybe, you know, go back to the Central Asia area. I, I want to take more time and enjoy my ride. I wouldn't want to cycle too far. I would take 50 kilometer, 70 kilometer and slowly make my way around the world. So yeah. that is my preference. More time, enjoy the tour. Uh, what about gear and equipment and uh, bicycle and okay. you know would you would you what would you change about that? Ah, okay, good idea. Uh, okay, I always have this dream to have this uh, hub called the Rulof hub. Okay, it's an internal hub for the bicycle. Uh, my first preference of uh, having my touring bike was with the Rulof hub, which is freaking expensive. So how I expensive is expensive? Five thousand dollars just for the hub. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I bought a Chris King hub, it's about thousand something only. Uh, thousand eight, if I'm not mistaken. Chris King is considered good. But the internal rule of hub is five thousand itself. Okay. So that was my first preference, but I couldn't afford it. Uh, so anyway, so if I can afford it, that would be the first thing I will change. So that I can enjoy cycling with a new hub. <laughs> Because my hub already, you know, it's good. I need to send for service, right? So I was thinking since I'm in France, very close to Germany, that's where the hub come from. I could get it changed there, you know. Okay. What is your attitude towards money, savings, uh, okay. investments, leaving money for your children? What is your attitude towards that? Okay, I think uh, we have to, be, to me, la, I have to be responsible and give priority to my family so that they are well taken care of. You see, no doubt I have my dream to see the world, but I cannot neglect my wife nor my children. All right? So my seven years plan since 2010 was to make sure right, they are involved and they are taken care in case I no longer uh, alive, let's say. Okay? Uh, number one is basically I know accommodation. I mean, I met a lot of uh, cyclists who I hosted who sold everything just to travel around the world. Right? To me, I have a wife and children. I can't sell everything. <laughs> they still need a place to stay. So make sure the mortgage of this house is paid. Even if I die, I still have a place for them. Okay. Now, because I could not buy insurance, I prepared a will. Okay. So that all this covered. My younger is still in university. I have a backup plan. In case run of so fund, the funds will basically channel to his education. I have joint account with my children and my wife. So that even birthday I can still send money for them to buy pizza. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right. So this all this I really tried out during my trial. And even those days uh, my, my, my children are still in school, my wife is still working. So I actually paid a caterer so that to send the food here they have dinner without cooking and also have the contact of grass cutter so that they can come and cut grass and pay we have a cleaner on weekend to come okay on sunday to clean saturday to clean the house and all the contact of the electrician aircon everything is all stuck there so my children can just call and i can just pay online so all this thanks to the technology that you are able to travel better and also take care of your family. Did you ever have a plan to set aside a certain amount of money before you can do these things or, or not? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, uh, I knew after I retired, uh, to start with, <clears throat> uh, I cannot use all the money you know, to travel. Uh, that will be very irresponsible. I have to make sure certain things are covered. Number one, I still have a younger one studying, so I have a backup plan financially to pay if whatever saving is not enough. I have a property that I will sell for him. 
Okay. Of course, I also need a passive income. So the rooms that I have, you know, I invited people who travel. Uh, they call it help exchange. They will is traveler who stay with me for free, in exchange of doing work, doing my gardening, doing the carpentry, doing electricity. So they can stay with me, half of the day do work. So this room where you have everything, uh, uh, kitchen cabinet, everything all done up, and extension is done by me together with Quailo. <laughs> Inside there are double decker bed, okay, and cabinets. Right, actually, with the health packs, you know, uh, I we do it. These are the cabinet done by me. This one and this one. I right? it's all my work. So I enjoy carpentry also. So uh, childrens are important. Family is important, and uh, there are people who ask me, you know, when you are traveling, uh, 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 what happens if there's emergency? So I have learned from other traveler, <coughs> they will park their bicycles and fly back to attend to all the needs and fly back to where they park the bicycle and continue. Okay, so priority to the family and it happens. Uh, what happens is that uh, when my brother passed away, so I parked my bicycle and came back. And now <coughs> it happens again after about, uh, about a year, my wife is not well. So I left all my things there and I flew back just to attend to my family. I, uh, <coughs> I also get my family involved whereby uh, my wife also retired. He will, she will fly in uh, because you have the route map. Yeah, we saw the route map, right? so she will roughly know. I keep her update where I'm about to reach. She like to visit uh, Kathmandu, so I was there early. She booked the hotel she likes, so I get to enjoy a nice hotel. She flew in. I pick her up at the airport, and we enjoy, you know, Nepal. She flew off back. Then I continue my journey. So the next was supposed to be maybe Italy, but she didn't make it. Okay. Okay. And lastly, advice to young people. Oh, advice to young people. <clears throat> uh, well, I suppose now the generations are so into computers. Okay, Of course, you can find all the information in computers. But nothing beats the real thing. Okay, Nothing beats the real thing. That's one for people who are... You know, computer glue to it. Now, people who is adventurous, it says, you know, how could I afford it? You know, I'm still young. Uh, I'm working. I cannot take my time off to travel. Okay, there's one option is you can work, right? And travel on certain time, certain section. Okay, and then go back to work, right? Once you have the money and fly back where you stop the last time and continue so within maybe 10 years you cycle you have you have done the whole world trip so that's one way or <clears throat> work as much as you can over a period of years save as much as you can quit your job that's what all the all the <laughs> westerners do for two years they travel broke come back work again save money and finally now because you have internet you know people who travel around the world works along the way i have met bloggers i have met uh, copy, uh, uh, copywriters who actually do translation as they travel the money bank into his account withdraw and he continues to travel and i ask him where do you work oh as long as there is internet like in front of the nice beach, I would do you know, have a sip of the coffee, looking at the view. What a way to work and earn a living! Fantastic, Peter. You're a real inspiration. Thank you for spending time. <laughs> no, uh, it's the experience, people, that I see and share, right? Uh, honestly, you know, now because of the technology, if only I'm more computer savvy. There's so many possibilities. And now, now is the MCU, everyone is on the internet, right? Yeah. So, don't do it at home. If, let's say, the pandemic is <coughs> over, with a laptop, travel, block. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. Thank you so much, Peter. Good. Take care. Okay.